you know the feeling waking up in the morning and not knowing why you're doing this so this is a bit what happened to me over the so you're making money but you weren't feeling fulfilled exactly welcome to the excellence project and in this episode you're going to hear from sandro Cazzato from switzerland this is a top rising network marketing leader top earner he shares all the lessons that he's learned along the way to very quickly developing a very large organization and large income i think you're going to enjoy it and with no further ado let's jump into our conversation with sandro cazzato so i'm here with sandro cazzato did i do that right Perfect. Pretty close. Bravissimo. Bravissimo. Probably, bravissimo. <laughs> and uh, if you're listening to this, you can hear that my voice is much lower than normal. Um, kind of came out of having laryngitis this last week and then just had a two day mastermind event. And Sandro came over from Switzerland. And normally I would have postponed or something, but since he came all the way from Switzerland to Las Vegas, I'm going to power through with my. Uh, my deep bass voice today, but welcome. How are you doing? Thanks a lot, Eric. Thanks uh, a lot for having me and not postponing. Yes. Um, I feel honored. I'm very good. I'm good, very good, good, good. My, my mind is burning after the last two days in the next level mastermind. Yeah. And uh, I'm a bit nervous. I'm on are you? you? I am. Oh, don't I be am. nervous. Don't be nervous. We're just going to chat. Um, <laughs> Sandra, you, you've had a lot of success in a pretty short period of time over the last three years or so um, got involved in this network marketing space and have grown a, a large business quickly. Uh, you have approaching a hundred thousand people on your team, something like that yeah. over the course of uh, these last three years. And it's ex uh, expanding mostly in Europe. Yes, exactly. We're not in the States yet. So okay. we are. What country, focusing. what countries are you, are you operating in? currently your team so the biggest countries are definitely germany um austria switzerland france belgium italy we have a strong team already in portugal uh also in uh in latvia and yeah we also start starting now in in the balkans like bosnia serbia and these uh, major countries so it's really the focus is uh, Europe and to stabilize ourselves yeah. in Europe first. So we're going to get into your story, how you grew a team so quickly. But before we do that, um, what is your background? What, what, what did you do prior to getting involved in network marketing? So I started, studied IT. Uh, I was creating an IT consulting company during the last 13 years. So I was an entrepreneur already before I started with network marketing. I had 80 employees uh, doing 80, 80 yeah. wow. doing projects in Swiss banks and insurance companies. So basically, uh, financially, I was I was doing great. I was doing good. There was no reason to look around or something. Yeah, so I'm curious, right? So you got this business and you're making money. Um, you got this lifestyle, you know, going on vacations. You and your wife, you know, on holiday. Um, got a couple kids. And what pulled you away from that? and into network marketing. What, what, what was this thought process, this decision process? So, you know the feeling waking up in the morning and not knowing why you're doing this? So this is a bit what happened to me over the- So you're making money, but you weren't f feeling fulfilled? Exactly. Hmm. No purpose, no vision. I was really just working for money. And it's not that I was so money driven because I don't live the lavish life, you know, I don't like to uh, to show off or I'm, I'm not the type of person so i really started losing the sense of keep going uh, keep going like this because i didn't feel this passion this fire anymore inside me and uh, did you realize this were you searching for something before you found network marketing or did you see network marketing and then you became a little bit dissatisfied no, I, I knew, I knew that I had to change something, but I had no clue what this change would be. I, I just knew that I cannot go on like this because, uh, yeah, it, it started. Most people do though, you know, they work in a job to pay the bills 
And this is like, yeah, I guess I should be grateful. I guess I should just, you know, I have a good business. I'm taking care of these employees. You know, I'm serving my clients. You know, I've got my lifestyle. I mean, a lot of people just, they might be dissatisfied, but not enough to blow it all up. Right. Exactly. So what caused, I'm trying to understand what caused you to say, you know, I'm willing to blow this all up. I'm willing to get rid of this business. Did you sell the business or, or did you? No, I still have it. You still uh, have it? Yeah, yeah, but I have the shares. I'm not active anymore in the company, but I still have the shares. Okay. So I think what uh, played a big role in the whole thing is the fact that I, I wasn't willing to just work for money anymore. Mm -hmm. That's it. I knew there is more inside me. I knew I had some kind of great uh, potential, but the, the the current context didn't give me the chance to express that. Didn't give me the chance to show that. I I must admit, IT and uh, financial environment in in Switzerland is a bit you know like like this, very dry. So either you fit in in this whole game or uh, you, you need to leave. And I, I started, I'm very grateful for that. I'm started to ask myself the right questions during the pandemic where I was at home, still doing business, but I had more time to dedicate to myself. So I went into myself. I started understanding that I want more. I want something else than what I had. But the problem was I didn't have the solution yet. Yeah. So you want more, you're, kind of restless. Um, and, and let me back up just for a moment. Have you always been restless as a kid, you know, as, as a student, um, were you always kind of searching for things or were you entrepreneurial? Were your parents entrepreneurial? How did you grow up? What was the background? Because, you know, did, were, were you, were you born and raised in Switzerland? Yes. So, so being born and raised there, it's pretty, uh, there's a right way to do things. Exactly. It's very precise. Mm. You know, there's, um, there's, you get rewarded for following the rules, doing what you're supposed to do, being a good boy. Right. Absolutely. Did you rebel against that or did you, did you enjoy that part of the culture? I enjoyed it. Okay. A lot. And I must say that my parents, uh, they influenced me also in a way that I would go like the traditional career way with the university, study at information technology. They both taught me good um, work ethic. Mm -hmm. My mother, she has her own um, hairdresser studio. My father, he is a, he's still a truck driver, you know, he, mm -hmm. he loves doing it, he keeps working. Um, but I, looking back, I understood that I just wanted to fit in, in their vision, you know, and being like a good example also for my brother and, uh, just do it the traditional way. So the reason why I ask is network marketing is not fitting in. It's, it's the opposite of fitting in. It's almost like rebellious against the structure, uh, against the the matrix against uh the system out there so <clears throat> when you first took a look at this did peep did your family think you were crazy well in the first step everybody around me thought i was crazy because uh the first thing that i did after putting down the numbers i did some kind of uh, business case in an excel spreadsheet when i understood a bit the system First thing I did, I went to my business partner of the other company and told him, hey, I found our next business. And he looked at it, he saw the numbers, but he said, believe me, you don't want to do this. I know you, you're an introvert. You need to talk to people that today you wouldn't even say hi to them. Uh, you need to go to events and do this and that you don't want to do this, believe me. And I, I was a little bit discouraged after this first conversation. On the other side, I looked at the numbers and I told him, you're crazy. We need to do this. Look at this. I didn't even know what he was telling me because, uh, in fact, a component human being, I didn't calculate in this business case. I only found out after 
what he was trying to tell me, but yeah, luckily I didn't listen to him. So um, he he says, you know, this is not good for you. Um, did you talk to your parents about it? Well, they they were my first my first uh, recruits uh, recruits. Yeah. yeah, so first part of your team, so they are okay. They're they're in absolutely. All right. Uh, what about your wife? Well, she um, I. I only, only after I started telling her what I was doing was uh, what I was, because of course, as I said, I mean, we had a running business. Um, I was working a lot already back then. So we didn't talk a lot uh, with each other about what I was doing business wise. Um, we were also going through a very special phase back then. So I only after came up with the fact that I started like some, some mm. new stuff. Special phase, what does, that, what does that mean? Yeah, so uh, I told you th the fact that I was unhappy in my business affected everything. Everything. So mm. I was, I started questioning uh, everything mm. around me before mm. I wasn't uh, honest to myself and I didn't understand that I had to make the change. So that's it. Wow. Okay, so this happens like two and a half, three years ago. Yeah, it happened in uh, October, November 2020. So it's two years and six, seven months ago. Okay, so two and a half years ago, you make this decision and you say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my business over on the side and get somebody else to manage it, run it, um, and support that. And I'm going to go do this network marketing thing. Did you have any bias against network marketing? Did you have any uh, preconceived thoughts about network marketing? Because um, some people that come from the traditional business world, they feel like they understand it, but they don't really understand mm -hmm. it. You know, uh, did you have any previous experience with it? Yeah, to be honest, it wasn't the first uh, approach when I was 21. Mm. That's ages ago. Uh, I was looking for a side job um, beside my study. So I was answering to some article in the newspaper saying, hey, are you looking for a side job? Uh, no, uh, no investment, uh, working from home, blah, 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 all this that we know. So they invited me straight to an event in Zurich. Mm. And I went there, I was in this big room and some leaders were walking in with Tina Turner music, you know, and they jumped up and... I thought, where am I? Why am I here? You know, that was my my first thought. And I was more shocked than anything else. Why? Because my mind wasn't able to understand these vibrations, this positivity in that room. So I didn't have like the best um, base to build on like a, a network marketing business because my first experience wasn't the best one. But uh, there is something that I decided and I said, okay, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it my way because I wasn't so happy about what I saw back then in this mm -hmm. room. I'm not you didn't like the hype. Exactly. Ah, I, I, you wanted to just be a business. Exactly. You know me a bit now. I'm very relaxed. Yes. I'm very chill. Yeah, I'm, I'm an introverted person as well. And a, a crazy thing about our profession uh, this network marketing space is so many top earners are introverts. You know, they, they lose energy in a crowd. Mm, um, mm. They need to recharge by themselves sometimes. Um, it's interesting what happens with that. So um, I, I wasn't crazy about the hype as well. Um, you know, I get it. You know, I get excited in spite of myself sometimes, but um, even like at a Tony Robbins event, I can't jump up and down for three days, you know, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. too much for me. It's like, okay, 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 okay. Teach me something, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know I need to change my state. I know I need to jump up and down. Um, but <clears throat> you know, I, I, I want to get to the business side of it. And it sounds to me like you almost laid out your own business plan. You know, you took a look at the products that were available and the support that was available and the compensation plan that was available and say, okay, I'm going to map out a plan and I'm gonna treat this like a real business. Exactly. Is that how you approached it? Absolutely. Okay. So as you lay this out two and a half years ago, um, talk to me about the first 90 days. So the, what what was your plan? What did you do? And, and 
before you answer the question, I'll just say to our audience is almost a hundred thousand people on your team, two and a half years later, uh, you have uh, an enormous amount of people making six figures a year. Uh, you're making seven figures a year and, um, yeah, other people on your team are making seven figures a year. Mm -hmm. So you've had wild, radical out of the box success. Okay. So <clears throat> with that as a backdrop, backdrop, what was your plan to launch your business? So as I said, everything, uh, was created on an Excel spreadsheet. I saw what would have been possible uh, within the next six months if I would just apply what I wrote in there. Um, the fact that I didn't wait one second until I started with it because I had zero knowledge about network marketing. So what I did, I bought your book. I read your book kind of overnight. What helped me also a lot and give me this um, vision of scaling quickly is the 45 second present the napkin presentation mm -hmm, of Don mm -hmm. Faila. And I just started to schedule in lots of appointments in the first months in December. I was so you you launched in December, first of December. Not usually a great time, you know, but you just decided it was the time. Exactly. I never, I mean, I love coffee, but I never drank as many coffees as... Uh, you did in December? You were very caffeinated. <laughs> crazy, crazy. And I lost also my voice after mm. five, six days. I was yep. like, I like this, you know. But I managed to subscribe 26 uh, distributors in 30 days. In your first 30? Exactly. Okay. And within this 26, I got my four top front lines. Yep. And the fifth was introduced to me the months after by one of the 26 that I subscribed in, mm -hmm. in December. And I didn't lose time because I, I, I told you I had no clue about network marketing, but I got very quickly in this mode. So we started scheduling Zoom meetings. It was in the middle of the lockdown, so we couldn't meet. And only about 30 days after starting, and we achieved already like a rank in the company that I heard usually it takes one year to get there. I, I looked at my people like, we are doing something special, guys. We need to give uh, a, a name to this baby that we are creating. Uh, so we founded our community the 1st of January in 2021. And I think this was a game. You just kind of named your team. Yes, we named uh, our team. What, what's, what's the team name? Ascense Tribe. Ascense Tribe. Ascense Tribe. 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 Got it. It's based a bit on the products. It's based also on the fact that we want it to be the essence of our company. Mm -hmm. Now our vision expanded. Now we want to be the essence of this profession because uh, we, we stand for professional network marketing with, the, with good values, healthy value, values. So we gave uh, the name and with my top five people, we just developed, developed, developed. We gave uh, monthly, uh, weekly, sorry, opportunity meetings, uh, twice a week coachings. We instinctively- You're doing most of this on Zoom because of the lockdown, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah exactly. So we, it was all virtual at the beginning. Exactly. And it, it was crazy because uh, I remember the 1st of December when I started, an upline manager called me. He put me in a Zoom call. He wanted to know how and where, who are you and stuff like this. <laughs> he told me. He who's, who's the person that re recruited you? It's actually uh, a friend of mine. It's, it's a lady that uh, she's also a hairdresser. And she just presented me the business. If you want, you can buy from me. If you want, you can also sell. And I snobbed her a bit in the beginning because I said, uh, Samantha, I'm an entrepreneur. Should I go and sell cosmetics and perfumes now? Or what, what's the thing yeah. that you're uh, offering? So yeah. What, what, what caused you to finally open up your eyes to it? Because you got a, a hairdresser yeah. approaching you yeah. with an IT company. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a lesson for people to... Don't prejudge, you know, somebody has got a big successful business. You can still, and she was approaching you about perfumes and cosmetics, right? Exactly. And you're a guy running an IT company with 80 employees who would think that that would be a prospect. But what people don't know 
is what's inside the heart of another person that you're restless, that you were unsatisfied, that you were looking for a change. You didn't know what it was going to be, uh, but you were looking for a change. So how did you get past this first, first of all, uh, perfumes and cosmetics, mm -hmm. you're a guy and I have a business. I'm already an entrepreneur. Why are you talking to me? How did you get past that? What she didn't know is that she planted a seed. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So the second I got the products, because you, I, did I'm you buy the products just to support her? Yes. Ah. Yes. So this was uh, the the end of uh, our our story because she didn't tell me that uh, it's network marketing. You mm. know, she didn't tell me this. When I got the products, first thing I googled the company name. I googled if it's known in my area, and second thing I would do is calling up the company and asking for exclusivity for the German speaking area because I wanted to start this uh, distribution business like this. But then I jumped on this call with his manager. He told me he has 4,800 people in his team, is four and a half years in the business, doing already good because he was living in Southern Italy. So if you earn this in Southern Italy, you're doing very good. And the second he told me that he had that many people on his team, I disconnected completely from this conversation and my brain started developing vision, business plan, everything already in my head. So I told him, uh, Christian, I don't want to take anything away from you, but when I, if I start today, I'm going to be there where you are in maximum one year. I told him right in the face like this. What did he say? He laughed at me. Yeah. <laughs> he laughed at me. But today, Eric, I know why he laughed at me because I encountered so many blah blah blahs down the road, sure. and uh, and so I I I get. I get what he thought about me uh, back then. The truth is that we achieved this rank after one month and 26 days. Mm. And then he wasn't laughing at me. No, anymore. he was like, go, go, go. That's it. Yeah. So it was really nice to see that. But the game... Did, did, did the lady who introduced you, does, is she still involved in the business? Yeah, but not so much. Yeah. She's doing sales in her uh, studio, but it's... Uh, Just she, a little she's bit. She's not building, yeah. But, but so... All she'd have to do is do a little bit and she'd be able to get a big override on you, yes? Yeah, so I max I maxed her out. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. So she is not earning that big money on me, but I understand. Uh, yeah. 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 So she she would have to build some additional yes, stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Got it. The big game changer came after two and a half, two months, because it was the end of January. I was watching a YouTube video where you were talking about a ninety days run. And one part of me felt like, okay, it's already what I'm doing. I'm creating I'm, because uh, in two months, uh, we built with the team 750 distributors mm -hmm. in two months. So I thought, okay, how can I go back to them and tell them to push even more? So I gave, I started this campaign. We called it uh, Project 10K. I was convinced that we could go out of these three months and have 10,000 distributors. They, the, my top five, they were looking at me like, you're crazy, man. You're, it's, it's not possible. How should we do this? So we scheduled a pre-launch call, like you suggest. And uh, people were calling me after this call saying, this is it. You created all this hype to tell us to push more, to prioritize, to go all, all in, all out, whatever. And I said, yeah, it's exactly what it is. And I didn't care if people were listening or not because we had 70 people on this call, on this launch call, but we were sharing this vision of this 10,000 distributors. So we didn't reach that, but uh, we ended the run with 4,200 distributors. 4,200. So how important at the beginning was you being unreasonable with your vision? It was uh, the key. Hmm. It was the key. Because not having uh, knowledge in the profession, the network marketing profession, not knowing what's, what's possible and what's not possible, we just decided to make it, you know. Nobody told us it's not possible. So we just went out and, and did it. 
And um, I, I have someone in my team, she's my best frontline today. She came from a previous experience where she, she was five years there, she wasn't making a lot. And she kept telling me after the first months, do you even know what you are doing? Are you aware of the fact that we are doing something that she never heard before? And that's a bit what everybody tells me when I share my story that we are breaking records, we're doing this and that. For me, it's still not tangible because in my eyes, I'm still, I'm just working mm -hmm. and I'm just uh, fulfilling this, uh, this purpose, this vision, this, uh, every day, every day with discipline, with, uh, continuity, with consistency, that that's what I'm known for to be cons consistent for mm -hmm. the last two years and five months. So I think it's uh, dreaming big and having a big vision, not listening if, uh, to people that tell you it's not possible stop it you're too obsessed you're too this you're too that it's did you get a lot of that people yes. saying slow down yes. slow down slow down absolutely yeah yeah most entrepreneurs do and and the great ones just ignore it they say yeah yeah whatever you know i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna go bigger then i'm gonna have a bigger vision a stronger vision so you finish this 90 days you got uh over four thousand people now mm -hmm. on your team you know you're you're four or five months in and uh, people are making money. People are making sales. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what's the next chapter? The summer came. Mm. And nobody warned us that summer. It's a slow, it can be a slow month, especially in Europe. The Europeans love their summer holidays. I don't want to exaggerate, but we lost 60% of the business. Wow. In July and August. And it was the summer where the whole lockdown was uh, just um stop yeah and people were allowed to go on holidays and they I, were ready to go on holidays i felt like they were going on five different vacations during this uh six five mm -hmm. weeks that we have in switzerland a bit more in germany but i understood you cannot hold people back now they just need to go and enjoy and they will come back full of energy so with the people that were staying there we did some we strengthened our skills. Yeah. We started. Uh, but did it scare everybody that, that yes. the volume went down? Yes. Did it scare you? I was I was trying to, you know, I, I don't like to um, go with the emotions and with the feelings. I always try to give a reason based on numbers. Hmm. So I saw that people were quite engaged, were coming to our Zoom calls, but I saw the numbers going down and... I, I'm also not the guy who's looking for excuses, but uh, I saw how people were just flying out, you know? And I told to my the heart base, of um, to my inner circle, guys, let's stay together. Let's develop a strategy where we're going to strengthen our skills. Everybody who wants is going to do that with us during this summer strategy, we called it. Mm -hmm. And this, Eric, was game changer of the entire journey Be why because first of all we started with this process that you need to be skilled before you can do something i was listening to um i think it was a youtube video where you were asking the crowd what are you doing what was your previous job mm -hmm. and they told something and then it's how long did it take you until you got there well, I studied, uh, I had 10 years of experience. What do people that know you tell about you, you know, mm -hmm, you remember mm -hmm. for sure. So this, I used exactly this example to people. How can we go and try to tell what professional network marketing is if we don't have the skill, if we don't develop uh, the knowledge? So we just- You started focusing on developing the skill base yeah, inside your team. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that you know, a team with the highest skills wins ultimately, because mm. if you have the skills, you'll take the action, mm. you'll have more confidence, you'll be more consistent, you know, less insecure, you know, you get better results. Um, That's and, and a lot of people, it's funny, um, they're trying to make money without skills. Mm. They're hoping to get lucky. They're hoping to be in the right place at the right time. Instead of just, it, these skills are not difficult to learn. You can learn them pretty mm. quickly. Mm. Um, and you can teach them to others pretty quickly. Yeah. But people will give, you know, 10,000 hours to learning to be a doctor, but they won't give 
10 hours of study True. learning how to prospect, for example, True. Uh, or promote events or any of any of the basic uh, fundamental skills. So, all right. So you, you, you uh, begin this process of making uh, skills a priority inside the team and people's confidence start to rise. Exactly. Okay. So you come out of the, the summer, you know, you start focusing on skills and momentum starts to pick back up. Yes. Especially after our company convention, it was a bit hard for me because I had also to promote these events during summer where people weren't excited. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't make money. So why should we go buy a ticket, uh, buy, a, um, yeah, go in a hotel and stuff like this, you know, and it was my first big convention. So I didn't even know what to tell them. You know, mm -hmm. it was uh, all new for me. Uh, still, we promoted this event. We brought 100 people to this event. We got rewarded for being the first, the fastest diamond manager. And this gave us so much belief, strength. We were really proud. We were now recognized also inside of the company mm -hmm. because it was like a German speaking team coming, like a new, the newbies, you know, we, we yeah. got there. But we we got the show at this at uh, this event, so we came back. We used this momentum, launched the next ninety days run. So you did another one, another one in the same year, in the same year. Yeah, strong. And uh, this brought us uh, really not to the moon yet, but very very close to the moon because we achieved by the end of that year twelve thousand distributors. Twelve thousand people. All right. So checks are up, volumes up. Momentum's up, people are making money, mm -hmm. people are happy, you're mm -hmm. building a culture. Yep. And uh, things I'm I'm assuming just progress. Exactly. You know, how many 90 day runs have you done now in two and a half years? Four. 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 All right. That's that's strong. I mean, typically a lot of people, top earners, they've only done one really. Mm. And they ride that for a long time. Uh one a year is kind of like a great standard mm. um, for, for long-term success. 90 days, really hard, nine months of support. Um, more than that, and you're a freak of nature. You know what I mean? Um, so, and and getting a team to do it, you know, that it's usually a solo journey. You know, you make the decision, you do it. Listen, it felt a bit like this on the one that we are right now mm. because we were really pushing hard for more than two years. We created so much demand and so much volume that uh, there were times where the company was also struggling to respond to this uh, high demand. So I, I got also the time where my team was telling me, are you crazy? Are you sure that we want to do that again? You know, uh, on one side, we are, we were a bit exhausted, mm -hmm. but on the other side, we knew that's the only right thing to do because it's like when you're on at least one, if you do once a year, um, that's a good rhythm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody can do that. Yeah. You know, go crazy for 90 days, support for nine months, you know, do it again. I, I'm so excited in this pre-launch phase. It's like being in love again. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, it's fresh. it's fresh. It's, and then we are really good in starting these campaigns with a specific name where we, ha we have a message to tell. I think this is also important because if you can approach a prospect with a specific, with a powerful message, they're going to listen. It's not just products. Come on. It's mm -hmm. a, a life changing experience that we offer to you. We bring, we bring the gift. So it's, uh, it's really something that, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. addicted to that. Talk to me about, uh, what do you think after two and a half years now, um, what is your superpower? What is the thing that you are, you've, you've realized you're particularly good at that's helped you to grow your team as, fast and strong as you have so there are two or three things the first thing above all is uh, constantly sharing my big vision mm -hmm. so that's it because uh i keep telling where we will be in one year in five years in 10 years if we keep going like this i also tell to my people where they will be if they will follow because i promised them guys and this was two years ago 
if you follow me, you're going to be just one, two months behind me. That's it. And they see how this is happening. The entire team sees how the results are kicking in. So we don't talk based on theory. We have results mm -hmm. that we can show to people. So having a, a vision and working towards it is something crazy. And my vision is so big. The vision of my team is so big that people who know me, I, I keep telling me we're going to the moon yeah. because the world is not enough for what we are trying to do here. So everybody in the team can relate to this. I keep... It's not really a, a, a Swiss um, trait. No. To be talking about going to the moon. They're like, you know, keep it conservative, yeah. under promise, over deliver. Yeah. Um, so what what's given you permission to think unreasonable, crazy, wild vision um, when it hasn't been, it's not really part of your culture? I was like this already before mm. network marketing because with the time, with the experiences that I made in the business, in my previous business, but also outside the business, I go to the gym every day. Um, I'm not uh, genetically, I, I don't have the best uh, base to, to build a, a healthy and nice body, but I did it. So limits don't exist for me because I know that I can make the difference if I want. So this became my mission, the whole thing. I believe in your potential because you don't believe yourself because you don't see it yet, but I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you how you can develop your personality, your uh, potential, and you can become an entrepreneur if you want. Mm -hmm. I tell you the mission and I told also to the guys during the mastermind is that if tomorrow you would decide to stop with network marketing, you have developed the character, the personality and the skills to become a CEO of a big company. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. This is what I promised to, to the, the leaders of, uh, in my, in my team. So I'm working, uh, with that vision. And I'm sure when it's going to be fulfilled, I'm gonna feel pretty useless. Yeah, but that's it, it's never fully fulfilled. I know, I know. Yeah, it, it's all it's always there's always yeah new things happening. So vision's one of your superpowers. Yeah. What's what's the other? Patience. 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 Big vision, but patience at the same patience. time. Patience uh, that goes hand in hand with empathy because. I have 100,000 different characters in my team and I learned to deal with all different characters. You can tell me all the bad words in the face. I'm not going to change my attitude towards you because I know that we can talk together half an hour. I tell you my way of thinking. I understand your way of thinking, but when at the base there is respect, mm -hmm. I think that if you have patience and don't escalate like too much, you can really have a nice, even if it's just business relationship with a person that can lead to something big. So patience with lots of different personalities. Yes. Uh, and, and learning how to adapt to a different personality to help them unlock their potential. Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. Any, any other superpowers? I have a very high sense of responsibility. Hmm. People tell me, why you keep pushing so hard? Why you keep doing this? Why you invest so much time, so much energy? I mean, the thing is, okay, I have reached what I've reached, but I'm responsible for 100,000 people right now. And for many others that we are also inspiring uh, on this on this journey. Mm -hmm. So being selfish, having a big ego, it's... It's not me. It's it was never me. So having this high sense of responsibility, protect also my people and showing them the the way. This is was what pushes me every day. Mm, love it. So talk to me. Uh, we talked a bit before about um, how you work with and manage different personalities. Mm -hmm. You know this whole red personality and different different types of personalities. So mm -hmm. to talk about that because that's been part of your kind of mindset as far as how you work with people. Exactly. 
So one and a half years ago, I attended uh, a course. It's called uh, Structogram. Struct, Structa? Structogram, yes. Structogram? English, yes. Uh, and uh, it's based on three colors which uh, represent our three brains. Okay, we have the green brain, we have the red brain, and we have the blue brain. And um, contrary to these other kind of models that we know with the four colors and stuff, Structogram is based on our biostructure. That means it's genetic. You can never change the outcome of this result, even though if even if you're attending courses, development, whatever, the result is going to stay the same. And this impressed me because I I want to know who I, who I really am genetically. Mm. And the guy who gave me this course, he did an excellent example. He said, listen, today with all the coaches out there, uh, you can compare it like uh, a basil is going to a cactus, asking the cactus how it can survive in the desert. And the cactus is super motivated because he's probably the best cactus out there. And he's going to tell the basil, no worries, you're going to stand still the whole day. During the night, you're going to recharge yourself with water and you will survive the next day. The basil is very motivated. He goes out because he learned from the best, right? He goes out and after 20 minutes of standing in the sun, he's, he's like this. And he doesn't understand. He goes back to the cactus and the cactus say, yeah, you don't want it enough. You don't believe in it. You're not motivated. You need to go and try again and nothing changes. So the only right answer that the cactus or the only um, suggestion that the cactus uh, should give to the basil is, basil, you're not made to stand in the desert. Go find a nice garden where you get plenty of water and you will become the nicest basil ever. The thing is that people try to fit in today and they the context don't allow them to express their full potential. But first of all, they need to discover who they really are because relationships, work, family, uh, environment. Over the years, they lead to creating some kind of false personality, which is the shell that everybody has. And we lose ourselves. We don't know who are we really in our origins. So with this course, you get kind of a result who you really are. After this, we... We can teach basically what is the good context for you, the good environment for you so that you can really progress and express. What, what's an example of different, different environments? To give you an example, because this impacts everything. Mm -hmm. Imagine I told you I'm a blue personality. I'm introvert, a bit colder in the beginning. I live out of perspective. I want to be in the driver position. I like to plan. I like a project. I like a vision. That's it. But I don't like so much being at events, for example. Not because I don't like the people, but it costs me more energy because of, of my way of being more distant in the beginning. Imagine this lady, Samantha, would have approached me. Sandro, it's an amazing business. We go to events every weekend. You know, I would have been, no, Samantha, thank you, but it's it's not for me. And you need to know how um, to present the business, the opportunity, uh, based on the personality. Because network marketing, the good thing is it allows you to be whatever you want to, to be. But if I sell it to you like how I like it, maybe it's, it's not for you. So... The good thing about the community that we created, uh, network marketing in general, is that you can create the environment that you love. So the human beings have three needs. First need is energy. They want to get more energy from their environment than the energy that they invest. Second need is positivity. They love to be in a positive environment like the one that we had during the last two days, right? Third need is they want to have a project in life. They want to wake up in the morning and knowing why they wake up in the morning towards what 
are they working and doing? It doesn't need to be always work. It can be a hobby, something that you do with your partner, something that like has uh, a sense and a purpose. And once that one of these needs is not fulfilled, and it depends if you're green, blue, or red in proportion to these needs, you start looking left and right for other stuff, for other opportunities. I told you, I didn't feel the sense anymore of keep going with my business because I didn't see the purpose. I didn't have my project. So the third need wasn't fulfilled. And this we used to approach people because uh, what's the standard? You do a company presentation, blah, 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 script, blah, blah, blah. but why is Eric, Eric thinking to join my business? What need is not fulfilled right now? So asking questions is more important in the beginning. And this is what we teach people. You train this through, through your whole team? So we start now to expand it to your entire team. It's a little group that we tested first mm -hmm. to see how it goes. And it was amazing because, uh, yeah. Uh, the reactions and yeah the results were really good so uh, from june on we are starting to give the knowledge to the entire team yes. what's what are, what are some of the lessons that you've learned um in the last two and a half years that surprised you you know in growing your business it's like oh i didn't expect that but you know what what are some of the things that you in this journey of growing from zero to a hundred thousand people um what what stands out well, it stands out that you shouldn't have prejudges towards people. I approached entrepreneurs where I was sure that they would do amazing. <laughs> After one week, it's uh, they stop. Other people where you wouldn't have bet five dollars on them, they were excelling in a in a crazy way. So this is something that I really observed. The other thing is that it's a constant fight against ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I what does that mean? So nobody knows I'm gonna tell here and now, but uh, I mean I'm a very cold person. Okay, I'm, I'm an ice cube. I don't. I rarely cr cry. I rarely show my feelings and stuff. And in the beginning, I was I was overwhelmed with all the emotions, the feelings, the love that my team and the people in general were, were showing me. And I felt that something was changing in me because, um, because of my business that I had before. I really built this hard shell where you need to be always in control, deliver. I was always the youngest guy at the table dealing contracts, multi-million contracts with banks, insurance companies. So you couldn't uh, allow yourself to show weakness, uh, vulner vulnerability, you know, that it was really crazy. So I remember being in the gym. I have a gym in my house. And between the sets, I was listening to Jim Ron uh, podcast and something happened in me and I started crying out of nowhere mm. alone. I felt super stupid, by the way, but I, I felt like I was changing. You know, I was kind of finding back to myself and I was listening to so many testimonials during the last two years that this is like a general message that everybody tells I found myself again. I found myself again. And I heard this sentence, it's amazing, that network marketing is able to uncover what life has covered over the past years. So, and it's such a powerful sentence and it's, it's, it's the truth. It's the truth and everybody who really goes all in, who's willing to release the handbrake and allows the network marketing profession to do what it really can do with you, everybody is telling the same. So it's a beautiful instrument to find back to yourself. I love that so much. This idea of the the biggest reward that we get is the person that we become. Yes. That we find ourselves, we find yes. our best, a better version of ourselves. Absolutely. Um, you know, we it, it it's worth, what, what we do is worth it for, the places we go and the people we meet and the friendships we make and the money we make career 
we can develop, people we can help, causes we can contribute to. You know, all of these things Absolutely. are great. But the biggest thing is what we become. Because there are some people that have done well in life and they couldn't do it again. You know what I mean? They circumstance aligned lined up to be able to create a situation for them. And but here we get developed so strongly that you could take everything away and with the skills and the mindset and the belief um, and the leadership that you develop, you could quickly have it back. That's you know, I, I tell people all the time, you could take everything away from me and just from what the profession has given me, mm -hmm. I can quickly replace that mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, and, and you certainly don't have to, but you could, yeah. um, you know, what, what we become is really, really something. Absolutely. And also what's very important is the relationships that you create with your top people. Yeah. I mean, we are like this, you know, I keep saying I don't have an upline because it's the truth. I don't have an right. upline. Sometimes we make jokes and I say, you are my upline. Right. But I have them strengthening my back, you know, because, and they give me also the, the freedom so that I can concentrate on developing even a bigger vision in, uh, in contributing also to give a hand to the company to develop and everything. So it's really crazy how, how, how important these relationships mm -hmm. become in your life and how you can count on these people as they are there for you. The community is really interesting because inside the community, um, you know, we typically work in a work environment with people we don't particularly like. They're, we're not necessarily like-minded. Mm -hmm. um, they're not necessarily positive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competition happening inside of corporate structures, uh, a lot of politics. Here, you only work with people that you like. You don't have to work with anybody else. And you have a, a, a financial excuse to spend more time with them. Yeah. You know, because you think about how small your friend group gets as you get older in life. It's very, very small. Yeah. You don't have time. Um, but if you can work around people that you enjoy mm. and you all have excuses to go on a trip together or go to an event together or, you know, hang out together uh, and you can justify it all because it's still part of your business, that it, it increases the quality of your life dramatically. I mean, I can think of pretty much any country in the world and immediately think of friends that, you know, we might not see each other all the time, but anytime we do, we're enjoying ourselves and having fun. You That's know, it. every country in the world, That's it's it. so great. So Sandra, I, I want to thank you for um, being here and for sharing your message with everyone. Um, I'm sure we'll be uh, coming back for an update and new chapters as you're breaking new records and uh, uh, learning new insights about our business. Please send our best to your entire team and um, congratulations, I'm proud of you. Thank you very much, Eric. It was an honor for me uh, to be here with you in your studio. I appreciate it a lot. I don't take it for granted because I know that you're not at the top today. So uh, <laughs> even more, even more. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited about the journey. Thanks All for right, everything. Brother. All right, my brother. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Sandro Cazzato as much as I did. As always, if you liked it, do us a favor, subscribe to the channel and share this with someone that you care about. Until next time, have an amazing day and we'll see you soon.